Good morning, Trinity. Uh, this is the daily office for Monday. So what does that put us at? So 16, 17, I think this is Monday the 18th. Am I right about that? Probably should have checked this before I started recording. Yeah, the 18th. So we're doing the daily office for Monday, May 18th. Continuing to, to pray for you all and to... Um, to hope that in the middle of all this, you are you're finding encouragement, that you're reaching out for community. Um, it is going to be so easy in a season like this to become complacent, um, to get too used to being a part, to get too used to watching sermons online, and to forget that that absorbing content is not the content of church. That is not what it is to be a part of the church. And so I encourage you guys to, to fight complacency, to, com to fight apathy in the middle of all this. Um, stoke uh, your passion for the Lord in the middle of this season. Um, as we get started, I thought I'd reveal, you know, all the coffee that would normally go to the church um, is just going bad downstairs. So... I've brewed a couple pots for myself. Um, and it's far too much coffee for me to drink in a day. Uh, but the alternative is just for the beans to, to get stale because we don't know when we're coming back. Um, I'm beginning to taste the difference. I am. But I, uh, despite having worked at a specialty coffee shop, I'm actually not very picky when it comes to coffee. Or if I am picky, I'm almost picky in the opposite direction. Um, you know, everyone's into light roasts. I kind of like dark roasts. Everyone likes good coffee. I kind of like diner coffee. Um, this is irrelevant. But thought I would share with you, um, what, uh, what it is I'm doing here at the office. Uh, that personal, the personal touch. Uh, using my, my Trinity cup, and apparently burning my tongue. All right, let's let's uh, let's jump in. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Today, hear the words of Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You've given them bowls of tears to drink. You've made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it like fire, with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Leviticus 25, 35 to 55. 
If any of your kin fall into difficulty and become dependent on you, you shall support them. They shall live with you as resident aliens. Do not take interest in advance or otherwise make a profit from them, but fear your God. Let them live with you. You shall not lend them your money at interest taken in advance or provide them food at a profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan to be your God. If any of you are depend, if any who are dependent on you become so improv, impoverished that they sell themselves to you, you shall not make them serve as slaves. They shall remain with you as hired or bound laborers. They shall serve with you until the year of the jubilee. Then they and their children with them shall be free from your authority. They shall go back to their own family and return to their ancestral property. For they are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves are sold. You shall not rule over them with harshness, harshness, but shall fear your God. As for the male and female slaves whom you may have, it is from the nations around you that you may acquire male and female slaves. You may also acquire them from among the aliens residing with you, and from their families that are with you, who have been born in your land, and they may be your property. You may keep them as a possession for your children after you, for them to inherit a property. These you may treat as slaves, but as for your fellow Israelites, no one shall rule over the other with harshness. If resident aliens among you prosper, and if any of your kin fall into difficulty with one of them and sell themselves to an alien or to a branch of the alien's family, after they have sold themselves, they shall have the right of redemption. One of their brothers may redeem them, or their uncle or their uncle's son may redeem them, or anyone of their family who is of their own flesh may redeem them, or if they prosper, they may redeem themselves. They shall compute with the purchaser the total from the year when they sold themselves to the alien until the jubilee year. The price of the, sh of the sale shall be applied to the number of years. The time they were with the owner shall be rated as the time of a hired laborer. If many years remain, they shall pay for their redemption in proportion to the purchase price. And if few years remain until the jubil jubilee year, they shall compute thus. According to the years involved, they shall make payment for their redemption. As a laborer hired by the year, they shall be under the alien's authority, who shall not, however, rule with harshness over them in your sight. And if they have not been redeemed in any of these ways, they and their children with them shall go free in the jubilee year. For to me the people of Israel are servants. They are my servants, whom I brought out from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson today comes from Colossians 1, 9-14. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew 13, 1 through 16. Oh, I guess we missed the, the end of the Sermon on the Mount because it probably happened over the weekend. Oh well. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got, he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they didn't have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root... They withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. 
with them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says you will indeed listen but never understand you will indeed look but never perceive for this people's heart has grown dull and their ears are hard of hearing and they have shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God uh, join me now in the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, in the forgiveness of sins, in the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The collect of the sixth Sunday of Easter, so we continue in the um, season of Easter. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we're praying for those in bondage to addiction uh, and for the unrepentant. O blessed Lord, you ministered to all who came to you. Look with compassion upon those who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fears that beset them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery and to those who minister to them. Give patient understanding and persevering love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they should turn to you and live. And through your only Son, you have revealed yourself as the God who pardons iniquity. Have mercy on the unrepentant and those who do not believe. Awaken in them, by your word and Holy Spirit, a deep sense of their sinfulness and peril. Take from them all ignorance, hardness of heart, and contempt of your word. Grant them to know and feel that there is no other name under heaven given among men by which they must be saved, but only the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so bring them home, and number them among your children, that they may be yours forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Um, and continue to change things up with our um, prayers of Thanksgiving today. I'm going to pray a uh, pray, prayer of Thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth and for the diversity of races and cultures, um, which is timely after just getting off the phone with Boaz Johnson and his little church of, of many, many um, races and cultures there in Vernon Hills. It was a blessing to talk to him. So it um, feels right to give thanksgiving for, for the diversity of races and cultures that the Lord has brought into being. So we give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the wonder of your creatures, large and small, and for all the loveliness that surrounds us. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name now and forever. Amen. O oh God, who created all peoples in your image, we thank you for the diversity of races and cultures in this world. 
Show us your presence in those who differ from us and enrich our lives with their fellowship until our knowledge of your love is made perfect and our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, the, the prayer of dedication. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore thee. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, console me. Tell me what I should do. Give me your orders. I promise to submit myself to all that you desire of me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen. Now with that, guys, uh, receive the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Love you all.